Hello, welcome to Criminoli and welcome to my first reading vlog. So I've done a few book haul videos so far um, and some reviews, a number of reviews, but this is the first time I'm going to be uh, recording my experiences of actually reading a book. Um, and that book is something a little bit different. Uh, so anyone who's followed the channel for any length of time will know that I specialise in crime and horror and pulp paperbacks and that kind of thing. Um, but today, I'm going to be reading this, The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. Um, so, we'll see how I get on. Just been editing this video and two things occurred to me that I wanted to mention before you start watching it. So, two warnings. So, the first one is spoiler warnings because there are definitely spoilers in this. So, if you're planning to read... Uh, the Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie, and you haven't done so yet, you may want to wait until you've read it before you watch this video. If you're not planning to read it, then I think you might enjoy the video. Um, the second thing is there are some bits where I do read passages from the book which are a little bit on the saucy side. Um, so if that's likely to offend, um, then you may want to skip during the video. Thank you very much. Right, so it's half past nine on Saturday morning and I'm ready to start the book. My intention is to get through it over the course of this weekend. Um, so I've got a pretty clear weekend um, this weekend. No family commitments really. Um, no major chores to do, nothing like that. I don't know if you can see her, but my cat Venus has joined me here. I think she's just off camera. Um, but she's gonna join me in the reading experience. Um, but before I start, so yeah, so everything's ready for the day. I've got my book, got my coffee. Um, before I start reading it, I just wanted to talk to you very quickly about why I've chosen this book and, and why I'm doing this. So this book um, is one that was recommended to me by uh, Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. So if you don't know Crystal and if you're a crime and horror fan, um, you may well not because her speciality is romance books, hence the recommendation. So Crystal's a really great um, booktuber. I met her uh, originally on Instagram. Um, where we tried at some point to do a buddy read of uh, an N.K. Jemison book, um, which I unfortunately didn't manage to finish, although Crystal did, and she really liked it. Um, I tried to read, so, so whilst crime and horror and, and pulpy type stuff is what I love, I do try and read widely. Um, I try not to just restrict myself to those genres. So I'm always keen to try something in a completely different genre that's out of my comfort zone. So a while ago, I asked Crystal for a recommendation um, for a romance book and she recommended The Madness of Ian McKenzie, of Lord Ian McKenzie. Um, so I, I got a copy off Amazon and it's been sitting on my bookshelf ever since. Um, sorry, the cat's quite distracting. Um, it's been sitting on my bookshelf ever since, but I decided that now that I've got this channel up and running, it would be interesting to um, to read it and, and record my thoughts on it. Um, as something a bit different. So romance is definitely a genre I haven't read much of. Um, I think this year I've read, I've read the first Bridgerton book this year uh, and I've read a couple of um, kind of other romance novels over the year but certainly nothing like this and, and I would say and, and if you want to object to this or disagree with this then do shout but it, it was it occurred to me that this is akin to um, very much akin to the kind of men's adventure stuff that, that I really enjoy. So, you know, like the execution of books and things like that. So in, in that it is formulaic, mass produced fiction. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's the kind of fiction that's almost churned out for commercial reasons rather than artistic ones. And that's absolutely not meant to be a criticism because I love books like that. Um, but in, you know, in this case, it's targeted as, at a female audience, whereas men's adventure books are targeted, uh, are targeted as a male audience. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to read um, to read this book and just think about, you know, with that thought in the back of my head um, and think about that notion of, of mass-produced popular literature um, and, and how the male and female versions of it compare. Um, and I, I'm always, always interested in reading female authors as well because so much of the stuff that I read is by male authors um, because of you know as a result of the fact that um, you know I really like that kind of trashy pulp fiction type stuff which tended to be written by men um, and you know the crime and horror genres while there are a lot of great female writers in those genres 
they do tend to be a bit more male dominated still. Um, a few years ago, I think it was, I, can't, I think it was 2019, I spent the year only reading books by women, um, which was fascinating. So I read, I can't remember how many books it was now, but certainly over 50 um, books by women across a, a range of genres and found it a really interesting year. Um, and, you know, it certainly gave me a, a new perspective on the kind of stuff I normally read. Um, anyway, that's enough of me waffling. Um, I'm going to drink my coffee before it gets cold um, and start reading uh, about the madness of Lordy and Mackenzie. So I will check back soon. As I say, I'm intending to get this video, or get the book read over, the, over this weekend uh, and get the video edited and posted on Monday. So without further ado, I'm going to dig into the book. Cheerio for now. Sorry, I've just got, <laughs> I've, just, I've literally just started this. And the first line is amazing. Um, I find that a Ming bowl is like a woman's breast, so Linda Mather said to Ian McKenzie, who held the bowl in question between his fingertips, a swelling curve the creamy pallor. Don't you agree? Ian couldn't think of a woman who would be flattered to have her breast compared to a bowl, so he didn't bother to nod. If it's all as good as that, I'm in. Okay, so I thought I'd do a quick update. So it's uh, just coming up to 10 o'clock. Um, so I'm about 25 pages into the book now. I've finished the first two chapters and I have to say, I'm really enjoying it so far. So the setup basically is um, Lord Ian Mackenzie is a gruff Scotsman who uh, str struggles with communication, shall we say. And I, I think someone suggested to me um, that he's supposed to have Asperger's, um, which certainly, you know, seems to fit. So he, he, he communicates in quite a blunt manner, shall we say. So he's got this acquaintance, uh, Mather, who's a bit of a scoundrel, um, who is trying to uh, wed a or engage to a, a widow, um, Beth. Um, Mackenzie goes to the opera um, and, and meets them there um, and slips Beth a note telling her what a scoundrel mother is uh, and then manages to get her into his box, no pun intended, um, at the opera. Um, and <laughs> basically tells you wants to sleep with her, offers to marry her um, because he wants to sleep with her and, and then tries to seduce her. So that's that's within the first 25 pages. So it's certainly moving at a pace um, and it's it's got hot and steamy already. Uh, let me read you a quick passage. If you're of a, a delicate disposition, you might want to fast forward this bit. Um, so he's, he's basically, he just kissed her um, and she hasn't... Um, well, I'll read you what it said, so, so he's kissed her. So she started, her hands coming up to push him away, but she rested her hands on his shoulders instead and made a soft noise of surrender. He needed her body under his tonight. He wanted to watch her eyes soften with desire, her cheeks flush with pleasure. He wanted to rub the sweet berry between her legs and make her wet. He wanted to drive into her until he released, and then he wanted to do it all over again. Um, so it's certainly leading in a hot and steamy direction, although they do get interrupted um, at the end of chapter two. So I think that pleasure is going to be a pleasure deferred, um, but I'm definitely going to keep reading and see what happens next. And, and I also wanted to say, I probably did it a bit of, disser a, a, bit of a disservice comparing it to the execution of novels um, at the start. I think it's, it's probably, and, and the author, Jennifer Ashley, is probably a little bit above that kind of real um, pulp level. So, you know, I would say this is probably more akin to, in terms of things I'm used to reading, more akin to Lee Child or something like that. So it's 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 formulaic and a bit cliched, but well-crafted is what I would say so far. Um, anyway, I'm going to get back to it. Uh, right, time for another update. Crikey, this thing moves at such a pace. So I'm up to page 70 now uh, for the first five chapters. So we've learned more about um, Beth, um, so her uh, humble beginnings um, and her earlier life, and we've also learned more about um, Ian McKenzie's uh, mental health issues in his past. Um, but the biggest twists are twofold. So, um, so Beth has, has run off to, to Paris 
um, to kind of travel freed from um, her obligation to marry um, the uh, dis deceitful mother, um, who it turns out is into being spanked by prostitutes. Um, so she's gone to Paris. Uh, Ian McKenzie has pursued her, which seems a little bit stalkerish, but hey. Um, so, so he's run after her um, and they've, they've hooked up again um, and been interrupted again. So not courtus interruptus, but certainly foreplay interruptus. It was a, a heavy petting session um, uh, after a, a bit of uh, piano playing, uh, which, was, which was quite fun. Um, but the, the biggest thing is that um, there's been the murder um, of a prostitute in London um, and Ian was seen leaving the house um, and a, a policeman has now turned up in Paris to speak to Beth claiming that, that um, Ian's also tied to the murder of another prostitute five years previously. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all going on here and there's a nice kind of crime mystery vibe to the book um, as well now. So I have to say, I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far. It's incredibly pacey. It's full of um, mystery and melodrama, um, which are two things I absolutely love. So it's, it's <laughs> surprisingly uh, a massive hit with me so far. <coughs> I just wanted to pause and, and talk for a moment while I think of it about the fact that um, Ian is a neurodiverse character um, and he definitely is. So it's quite interesting in that he's, you know, at, initially he comes across as quite cold and, and blunt, but as he gets to know Beth, you know, obviously they talk more. Um, and what he says to her is that he's incapable of falling in love. So he, doesn't, he just doesn't understand what love is. And there's some other parts where he's, um, he's, a, he's an accomplished pianist, um, but he says he doesn't feel like he's able to capture the emotion of music when he plays it. So he can play it technically, but he can't capture the emotion. And that side of him, that holding back almost, so, you know, the fact he says he can't fall in love. I'm wondering, as a somewhat of a novice to romance, if that's often a theme in, in romance books. So my one frame of reference is, is Bridgerton. Um, and obviously in that, the Duke in that says that he is, um, you know, he refuses to, to have an heir because of his, his background. Um, so in that, you know, in that one, he's holding back from, from giving um, the, the girl Daphne, is it, in Bridgerton, you know, the, the opportunity to have a family. Whereas in this, um, you know, clearly there's going to be lots of steamy stuff between Ian and Beth. And, and indeed there has now been a, not, not full sex scene, but def definitely a steamier scene involving um, a sex act, shall we say. Um, but yeah, but he's saying he's incapable of love. And, and it feels to me like that's, maybe that's a, a really common trope in romance is, is the challenge for the female character of, of pulling love out of the um, out of the out of the man of breaking down those barriers, um, so it feels like that's a, a common conflict in in romantic stories. Anyway, that's enough of me babbling about romance. I'm going to read a bit more. Well, things are progressing. I'm up to page 120 now. Um, Beth and Ian still haven't done it, um, but they've done lots of different things. There was just quite a good section actually, which was written. Um, as an entry in Beth's diary, which actually worked really well, um, with them in the back of a carriage uh, and multiple uses of words like mouth, shaft, devour and seed. Okay, I've just finished chapter 11 and they've finally done it in a, uh, a small French hotel. There's some, <laughs> there's some good lines, um, like this one. It was a solid bed thick mahogany made to take men like Ian loving their women um, but yeah it was, it, was, it was quite good and at least they finally done it so that tension has been removed from the book um, but they are still being pursued by um, the I don't know if he's evil but the tenacious inspector fellows Okay, it's about half twelve now, so I've been reading the book for about three hours, I guess, and I am just over page 200, so I'm about two thirds of the way through. Um, the pace has slowed down a bit, so it's a bit calmer now, um, which is probably appropriate because it was just, it was incredibly fast for the first third, um, and that probably couldn't have sustained that, to be honest with you. So they are, Ian and Beth are married, um, but she is questioning the reason why he married her. Um, his, that they've been staying at the 
Mackenzie family estate in Scotland, um, which is kind of owned by his older brother, who's the head of the family, who doesn't approve of Beth and, and thinks she's just after Ian for his money. Um, and Ian's suffering from all sorts of black moods and flashbacks to his traumatic past, etc. Um, and has kind of stormed off to um, get his head together, which apparently is something he does every so often. And Beth is now heading back to London um, and is going to meet with Inspector Fellows and I think try and persuade him um, that Ian wasn't responsible for the, for the murders of the two prostitutes. So it is still really keeping me engaged. Um, it's doing that typical romance thing where um, every time you think the couple are getting together, um, some, some other obstacle gets put in their past, often created by themselves and by misunderstandings between them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's certainly formulaic, but I'm really enjoying it really continuing to enjoy it so um, I thought it was going to take me all weekend to read it but I, I suspect I'll get through it um, today. Okay so I'm about 80% through now I guess and um, the pace has really kicked up again so Beth is in London investigating um, these murders of the two prostitutes um, in you know, proper detective fashion, so running around interviewing various people, um, and it, she's narrowing in on who who done it, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's getting really quite tense and exciting, which is not what I was expecting at all. <coughs> okay, so I'm done, and I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so it was a nice mix of um, romance, obviously, but also you know it was quite exciting, it was quite fast paced. The the mystery was was reasonable. Um, I think the one thing that let down the mystery is, particularly towards the end, it relies a lot on characters not being completely honest about what's happened in the past and saying things like, oh, maybe I did kill her, um, and things like that. But, um, yeah, overall it, it worked and it was a nicely varied um, read. It turns out it's, it's actually the first in the series, um, which according to Good, Goodreads is called um, Mackenzie's and McBrides and there's about 12 books in the series so I'm not sure if I liked it enough to read any more um, but it was certainly fun as a one-off um, and, it, and it struck me reading it that the two and, and maybe this is an obvious thing to say maybe this is what always happens in romances but the, the two main characters definitely both go on a journey in it so Beth starts out as uh, you know an independent woman but quite naive um, and open to you know emotionally open but physically a bit closed off whereas um, Ian McKenzie you know is is the opposite so he's emotionally very very closed off um, but you know a very physical being um, and you know they kind of meet in the middle I guess and by the end of it they've both assumed you know they've both been liberated by their relationship with the other um, so Beth is much more worldly wise and much more carnal um, and Ian is you know finally able to express his emotions and things like that um, so yeah it was quite it was quite nicely done in that respect so yeah in interesting as well that you know Ian is definitely a character who nowadays we would think of as, as being neurodiverse and I thought he was quite interestingly and well portrayed um, and there's some LG LGBTQ characters in there too um, arguably, what one of the one of the pairs of characters, the plot line around them, is perhaps a little bit old-fashioned, um, but still good to see characters like that in a in a heterosexual romance book. Um, so yeah, overall, four stars from me. Big thanks to Crystal for the recommendation. Um, do check out her channel if you like romance because it's absolutely fantastic and she's a she's a great presenter. Um, and yeah. Uh, Obviously, it probably won't be reviewing things like this in the future, but hope you did enjoy the video. Um, if you like the crime and horror type stuff, there'll be more of that very soon. Um, but otherwise, yeah, have a, have a good day and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheerio.